Welcome to the second lecture on sequence of real numbers. Today we will discuss limit of a sequence. So we will see rigorous definition of limit of a sequence and we will discuss many examples. While all of you are familiar with limits, most of you have probably not worked with rigorous definition. So we will be more interested in limits of functions which is what arise in the uh, differential calculus. But limits of a sequence are closely related to the former and it occurs in their own right in the theory of Riemann integration. So this thing you will do in calculus 2 that is integral calculus. So what does it mean for a sequence to have a limit? So let's consider an example. So let's consider this sequence whose nth term is 1 by n. And we used to study the behavior of this sequence as n gets large. Clearly, as n gets large, larger and larger, this nth term 1 by n, it gets smaller and smaller. And it seems to approach the value 0. Or more precisely, the distance between this nth term 1 by n and 0, it becomes smaller and smaller as n gets larger and larger. So in fact, by choosing n large enough, we can make the distance between 1 by n and 0 smaller than any prescribed quantity. This is the key point. So let's uh, consider this example and let's draw the picture here. X axis, I will put n and in the y axis, I will put the nth term a n, a sub n. And then this point, this is 1 and this point it is 2, this point it is 3 and this is 4, this is 5. Now if we write the term, so first term it, it is just 1 and this gives the distance uh, this quantity. So I will write this point is, uh, so in along the y axis it is just this point, it is 1 and here I should write 1 by 2, here I should write 1 by 3, here I should write 1 by 4, here I should write 1 by 5. So we can clearly see that if n gets larger and larger, this term it is getting smaller and smaller and it is tending to uh, this value 0. So this distance it is getting smaller and smaller at each point and it is tending to 0. So this is the notion of a limit of a sequence. And rigorous definition, uh, so to see the rigorous definition, we should explain this statement. So by choosing n large enough, we can make the distance between this nth term and this value 0, uh, it is smaller than any prescribed quantity. Okay. So, so this is the statement. By choosing n large enough, we can make the distance between 1 by n and 0 smaller than any prescribed quantity. So the distance between this term and 0, it is given by this absolute value of the difference between nth term 1 by n and this value 0. So it is just 1 by n. And suppose I require that this distance, it is less than this prescribed quantity. So let's consider epsilon is 0 0.001, some value. Okay, And we want to find some n natural number n such that for all natural numbers greater than that uh, number this distance it is less than epsilon. So if we if we consider this epsilon so then I should I should take n equal to 1000 and then we can see that for all natural numbers greater than 1000 this distance it is less than this value all it is. We can do this for any number epsilon no matter how small it is. So for any number epsilon there exists a natural number n such that for all natural numbers greater than n this distance it is less than epsilon. So in this case we can choose any natural number n that is greater than 1 by epsilon. Okay. So, one by, so epsilon is positive number, so 1 by epsilon that is also some positive real number and we can, we can choose a natural number n which is greater than 1 by epsilon. So 
from this statement we can see that for any epsilon there exists a natural number n depending on that epsilon we can choose n is greater than 1 by epsilon in this case such that this distance it is less than that prescribed number for all natural numbers greater than n and this inequality it is equivalent to say that this nth term 1 by n it is lying in between minus so this is this is 0 and suppose this is epsilon this is minus epsilon so it is saying that for for this epsilon for this epsilon and there exist n such that 1 by n it is lying in this range in this range minus epsilon to epsilon for all n greater than n and let's consider another example so this is example 2 and here we consider this sequence so nth whose nth term is n by n plus 1 and we want to see that whether this sequence has a limit or not so though we have not defined what is limit but uh, so we have discussed epsilon delta uh, business so let's try to verify that whether for any number any prescribed number epsilon greater than 0 whether there exists uh, a natural number n such that this difference between n by n plus 1 and 1 it is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to this natural number or not so my guess that if n n gets larger and larger then this nth term n by n plus 1 it is getting closer and closer to 1 so this is my guess that 1 should be the limit so if n tends to infinity then this term uh, it it should approach to 1 so this is my guess and let's try to verify whether uh, it satisfies this epsilon delta business or not and what is that so it is saying that for any number epsilon there should be some natural number n depending on this epsilon such that this difference this distance it is less than epsilon for all n greater than uh, this natural number so in this case we can see that distance between this nth term and 1 it is just 1 by n plus 1 and I want that 1 by n plus 1 that should be less than epsilon so it is equivalent to say that n plus 1 it is greater than 1 by epsilon and it is equivalent to say that n is greater than 1 by epsilon minus 1 so we can choose a natural number n which is greater than 1 by epsilon minus 1 and then for this natural number we can see that distance between this nth term and 1 it is less than epsilon for all n greater than this natural number okay and this inequality it is equivalent to say that this nth term it is lying in between 1 minus epsilon and 1 plus epsilon okay so this difference it is less than epsilon and it is equivalent to say it is equivalent to say that minus epsilon less than n by n plus 1 minus 1 less than epsilon and then this inequalities it is uh, so these are equivalent to say this inequalities okay so now we should see the rigorous definition so you consider a sequence whose nth term is f sub n a sequence uh, fn it is said to be said to have a limit l that is a real number so a sequence fn is is said to have a limit l if it satisfies some condition and the condition is in terms of epsilon and n so that is epsilon delta definition what is that so condition is that so for any prescribed real number positive real number epsilon there should be some natural number n depending on that epsilon such that the distance between nth term f sub n and that l 
that distance it should be less than that prescribed uh, number prescribed real number epsilon for all natural numbers greater than n and these inequalities it is equivalent to say that this nth term it is lying in between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon so a sequence fn it is said to have a limit l some real number if it satisfies some condition condition is that for any epsilon there should be there exists a natural number n depending on that epsilon such that this distance it is less than epsilon for all n greater than n so from here we can see that if this natural number n it it uh, gets larger and larger then this term f sub n it is getting closer and closer to l and this is just epsilon n definition so if a sequence has a limit l so if it satisfies this condition then we say the sequence fn converges to l and we also denote that limit n tends to infinity fn that is this real number l sometimes we denote that fn it tends to l as n tends to infinity so this is it's it it clearly says that the term fn it approaches to l as n tends to infinity so this is just notation okay and definition is that so for any epsilon there exists a natural number n depending on epsilon such that this distance it is less than epsilon for all n greater than n we will see some examples a sequence is said to be convergent if it has a limit so limit of a sequence may not always exist if it exists then it is unique that we will prove later but this remark it says that limit for a sequence may not always exist but if it exists then it is unique and if limit exists then we call that sequence a convergent sequence so if limit does not exist then we call that sequence a divergent sequence so a sequence is said to be divergent if it does not uh, have a limit so showing that a sequence converges to a limit l is not easy first one has to guess the limit l and then one has to prove that l satisfies the definition so l satisfies this condition one has to verify that it is also useful to extend the concept of limit and allow sequences whose limits are either infinity or minus infinity so for a sequence fn we write that limit n tends to infinity fn it is infinity if for any prescribed real number positive real number g there exists a natural number n such that this nth term fn i should write it is greater than g for all n greater than n so we are extending the notion of limit and limit it can be infinity or minus infinity as well so here is the definition for a sequence fn we write that this limit is infinity if it satisfies this thing what is that so for every positive uh, real number g there exist n i should write depending on depending on g so this n it depends on g such that this nth term fn it is greater than g for all n greater than n in this case we say that fn diverges to infinity as n tends to infinity so we can clearly see that as n gets larger and larger then this nth term fn it also gets larger and larger and it approaches to infinity and dually for a sequence fn uh, this limit is minus infinity if it satisfies this condition what is that for any prescribed uh, real number g negative real number g there exists a natural number n such that this nth term f sub n it is less than g for all n greater than n so this n it depends on g 
so condition is that so this limit is minus infinity if for any prescribed negative real number g there exists a natural number n depending on g such that this nth term it is less than g for all n greater than n so in this case we say that fn it diverges to minus infinity as n tends to infinity so we can clearly see that as n gets larger and larger this nth term it it approaches to minus infinity and here are some examples we have already verified that limit n tends to infinity 1 1 by n that is 0 so limit of this sequence 1 by n it is 0 because for any epsilon we can have a natural number so that this distance between 1 by n and 0 it is less than epsilon for all n greater than n and this n it depends on epsilon so sometimes we write it is n of epsilon and similarly one can verify that limit n tends to infinity 1 by n power alpha that th this limit that is also 0 when alpha is greater than 0 alpha is some real num positive real number limit is 0 one can uh, verify in a similar way and we have also verified that limit n tends to infinity n by n plus 1 this limit that is 1 because for any epsilon we can have a natural number n depending on that epsilon so that distance between n by n plus 1 minus 1 this distance it is less than epsilon for all n greater than n so for any f positive epsilon we can have a natural number n depending on epsilon such that this distance it is less than epsilon and third example it says that the sequence n square it is divergent so it is not convergent why because so what is the uh, definition of a convergent sequence so it should have a limit and it should have a limit by uh, that we mean that it should have so th there should be some uh, real number l so if we draw the picture here so suppose this is l some some real number and we should prove that l it cannot be uh, the limit of this sequence so you consider any epsilon an epsilon let's say uh, epsilon you, you may choose epsilon is 1 okay so then we should prove that so for so let's try to verify whether for this epsilon there there is any natural number n or not is a natural number n such that for all n greater than n this term n square it should be it should be there in this range but we can see that for sufficiently large value of n this n square it is exceeding any prescribed real number okay so you cannot find a natural number n such that for all natural numbers greater than n this term n square uh, it, it is there in this range okay so there does not exist a natural number n such that this uh, distance between n square and l it is less than epsilon for all n greater than n so this is uh, this is the uh, notation for does not exist Okay. so this sequence it does not have a limit therefore it is divergent and in this case we can prove that it diverges to infinity so we can verify that this limit n tends to infinity n square it is infinity why because so here we can if we draw the picture again so this is this is 1 and second term is 4 third term is uh, 9 and then then 16 so on so then one can verify for any 
g greater than 0 there exist there exist a natural number n such that this n square it is greater than greater than g for all n greater than n so one may choose one may choose n one may choose any n greater than greater than g so then one can verify that if you choose n greater than g then for any natural numbers greater than n n square it should be greater than g so it is satisfying this uh, condition so this limit it is uh, it is infinity okay and in this case we 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 just we just say that of course this sequence it is divergent and it diverges to infinity let's consider another example so the sequence minus 1 power n uh, i claim that it is divergent it is not convergent now let's verify uh, why it is divergent sequence so if you draw the picture again so here suppose here you have 0 and here you have minus 1 here you have 1 okay and so I, I should write limit entrance to infinity minus 1 power n does not exist why so suppose uh, this limit exists and suppose this is a real number l okay so if possible suppose limit exists and suppose it is some uh, real number l and then what you do so then this l it should satisfy the definition so for any epsilon there should be some natural number n so here what you do you just consider you just consider l plus epsilon you just take epsilon that is half okay and i claim that for this epsilon you cannot have a natural number n which satisfies that definition okay why because so I, I i should write that there does not exist n such that this term minus 1 power n uh, it is lying in between l minus half and l plus half for all n greater than n because so l minus half it is here it, it will be somewhere here and l plus half it will be somewhere here so you can see that you choose any natural number n you can choose any natural number n and then you can always find some uh, some natural number greater than that such that this term it is minus one right so in that case minus one it is not lying in this range so we cannot find a natural number n such that for any natural numbers greater than n this term it is lying in this range so it is not satisfying that uh, definition right so this natural uh, this real number l it cannot be the limit of uh, this sequence okay so in this case limit does not exist and this sequence is divergent then this sequence it does not diverge to plus infinity or minus infinity okay so let's consider this example in this case i claim that this sequence it is divergent it is not convergent so if we write some terms here term is uh, minus one i should write okay and second term is four and third term is uh, minus 27 yeah. so in this case we can verify that uh, this sequence it does not have a limit even this limit uh, so this sequence it does not diverge to plus infinity or minus infinity okay yeah that's all i'll stop here